Hello, so we're going to talk about genetics. I want to make this kind of a rough and ready kind of idea about what genetics are about and how to use this specifically in testing for coloring dogs. I've done a lot of these videos and there are videos that are like 12, 13, 15 part series that you can go look at if you're interested in this in a lot more detail. But let's just see what we can get done in one or two videos that are 10, 15 minutes long. All right, so let's, let's first off, what the heck are genes? So everybody, every living creature has DNA and the DNA is basically a building block that if you've got DNA, you can build another of that organism. For instance, if you'd like to build a James Chopping, I don't recommend that you do it. But my wife would say definitely don't do it. But if you did want to build another James Chopping, you could take my DNA and you could clone that and build another of me. It's not normally, of course, the way things are done. It's much more common that you take two, um, a male and a female from the same species, take their DNA and from the combination of their two DNAs, you build another that has the traits of both of those parents. So just kind of a quick idea, what's going on here? Well, DNA is a long chain um, pro protein that is in every nucleus of every cell. And it is two strands of this stuff that's linked together with other strands of protein. There's actually four different proteins that are used to link these together. That's your DNA. Every nucleus in you has that DNA material in it. Um, and when you put together two male and females of the same species, why do I say the same species? Because if you try to do this with two animals that aren't the same species, for instance, a giraffe and a donkey, you can't get a gironki, unfortunately. <laughs> And that's because their DNA is different. They don't match up properly. And so consequently, you cannot get a Gironki. That's not exactly true because you can do things like, somehow or other you do this, you put a lion and a tiger and you get a liger. And you can produce a dog that's a combination of those two things with their combination of their traits. Those animals are, can't procreate. You know, an example of this would be putting a horse with a, uh, uh, a donkey to make a... Uh, or is that an ass? I forget which it is to make a donkey. You know, you can make, you can make an animal that's similar to both of them, but you can't procreate. Anyway, I get off track. But what happens here is, is you've got these two animals, two female and males, that uh, uh, procreate. And uh, so this might be the female, this might be the male. So this is going to be in the sperm, this genetic material, and this is going to be in the egg. And basically what happens, I'm going to get a paper towel here, when these two dogs, in our case dogs, uh, and we'll put some DNA strands in here for what it's worth, get together, this DNA unravels and half the DNA from one dog and exactly half the DNA from the other dog combine together. So you put this with this and you get a combination of the strands from one DNA with the corresponding strands from the other animal. And that makes up you. Your mum and your dad each produced half the DNA that makes up you. Now exactly which half they get, that's random. That's why your sisters and your brothers aren't identical to you because they get slightly different pairings from their mother and father than you did, unless you're identical twins. If you're identical twins, then your, your DNA matches exactly. Anyway, that's just, I don't want to go into this in any great detail because I could spend literally hours just talking about this. And I, but I'm not a geneticist, geneticist anyway, so I might give you bad information. But the point here is, is that DNA is in every nucleus of every cell of every living creature. And that DNA then determines when two animals get together the same species, what the DNA is going to be of the animal they produce. Great. Now, how, many, how much of this stuff is there? The answer is there's about 22,000 DNA pairs that make up me and you and your sisters and your brothers and your mums and your dads. And there is a similar number in a dog. They are different in terms of where they're physically, how they lay in the DNA strands. And that's the reason, by the way, that you can't get a, a Hugh dog or a dog am. 
you know, they, they can't procreate together. I mean, it's illegal anyway, thank God. But, but besides that, it just doesn't work. You don't get those animals. They have to be the same species. All right, so let's talk now specifically about, um, we talked a little bit about what genes are. How do they work? So we're gonna talk about color in French Bulldogs. Now, this whole conversation is not just about French Bulldogs, it's definitely true of other Bulldogs, and it's generally true of other, do other dogs, although the, the, the color DNA in dogs in general is not all the same. There are some differences, but they are for the most part the same. So uh, we're gonna talk now about a particular gene. Let's talk about a very common one in the French bull Bulldog is the, uh, the blue gene. And it's a bit confusing because we don't call it little b, big b for the donation of this. We call it big d, little d because that's called the dilution gene. But don't worry too much about that. But the point here is, is this gene comes in two different flavors. It is what's called the dominant gene or it's the recessive gene. And you have two copies of this. You either have two of these, two of those, or a combination of both. So you can either be this, or you can be this, or you can be this. There's three variations that you can mix those letters together. Because remember, you get one for your mum, one for your dad, one for your mum, one for your dad, one for your mum, one for your dad, one for your mum. So those are the possibilities that you could have. Now, it turns out that you write the dominant gene in a capital and the recessive gene as a lower case. For the majority of these color genes, you have to have two recessive genes for that color to be expressed or it's phenotype, physically what it looks like. So this is the physical representation, physical. If you only have one copy of the recessive gene, then you are a carrier, which means that you don't physically express it in your phenotype, but you, you do have a genotype, which means that genetically you carry it. Or you don't have it at all, and then you are not that. You are absolutely not that, dot, that color. You're not that color at all. So if you look at these three genes here, this is a dog that has nothing to do with blue, and it can never produce a blue dog. This is a dog that is blue and can produce blue puppies. And this is a dog that carries blue, and it can also produce blue cut puppies. How the hell does that work? So let's go on with that. So now we're gonna talk about, and again, I think it's important to remember that the right way to write this down is, is the dominant gene is capital, the recessive gene is lowercase. And for the most part, for the most part, you have to have two copies of the recessive gene for that gene to be expressed. It's not always true. Uh, things like brindle are a bit different than that. But for the most part, that you have to have two copies. Okay. So that's why it gets a little bit confusing because kind of the devil's in the detail as to exactly you know, which genes are dominant, which are recessive. But for the most part, most of these genes are what are called recessive genes. You have to have two copies of the recessive, one from each, you have to get one here, one from each parent to make you a double recessive, which then means that you have that particular color. Punnett squares. A Punnett square is just a convenient way of looking at how genes might mix. So what you do is you draw a square and you divide it into four quadrants. And you put one of the parents on the top, it doesn't matter which one, but we'll put the male up here, and we'll put the female over here. We could do it the other way, it wouldn't make any difference. But, so the male, the male has, we're gonna put down the male's um, uh, DNA up the, on this side over here. So in this case, we're gonna pretend that this is a dog that is not blue, but it's a carrier. So it's big D, little d for blue. And we're gonna do the same thing for the female. She also is not a blue dog, but she's a carrier. This then shows us what the possibilities are of these two dogs breeding. D to D gets that, a non-blue dog. D to little d gets us this, which is a carrier of the blue gene, again, not a blue dog. This gene with this gene here gets us another carrier, and this one, this one, gets us the blue dog. So. These are all equally likely. There's four possibilities, which means that one quarter are gonna be blue dogs. Two one quarters, which makes for one half, because remember we've got a quarter and a quarter, will be carriers, and one quarter will have nothing to do with blue whatsoever at all. 
So that shows you the probabilities of what can happen when you pre do dogs. Let's do this a little bit differently. Let's make this dog a blue dog. And we'll leave this dog as a carrier. What happens now? Gotta get rid of these. All right, here we go. So this dog gives a D, this dog is a little D, it's a carrier. This dog is a little D, this dog is a little D, it's a blue dog. This dog is a little D, this dog is a big D, it's a carrier. And this one here, little D, little D. So there you go. Now what do you got? You have this column here is one half blue. This one here is one half carriers. So you can very quickly go look at any DNA you're given and t figure out what the heck's going on. Let's do the, the other last example, of course, would be that you've got, well, we'll do this. We'll do, if, you, if both dogs are little D, by the way, it's really straightforward. Every single dog is blue. That's what happens if you put two blue dogs together, you get 100% blue dogs every time. And let's do the last one that would be that they're uh, both, uh, did I do both carriers? I don't think I did, let's do that. They're both carriers. No, I didn't do that. Let's just do this. I mean, there's a number of variations. Let's make this, non-blue dog to, to a blue dog, what do you get? Well, you get that. You get all blue carrier dogs. You put a blue dog with a blue carrier dog, with a non-blue a non dog, every dog's a blue carrier. None of them show it, but they all can produce puppies. All right, so that's, that's it on Punnett squares. I don't want to go, you know, you can go a long way on Punnett squares. The next question would be, what happens if you've got two genes you're looking at? And let's just do that real quick. Um, you know, if you have a dog, let's, let's marry two dogs together. Let's marry um, a dog that is a blue carrier and it is a chocolate carrier. And we'll breed that to a dog that is a blue dog that is uh, also chocolate, which we'd actually call a, uh, um, well, that would actually be an Isabella. Don't worry about the terminology and the colors, that's a whole different lecture. But what do you get if you do this? Well, the answer is these two genes, one for blue, one for chocolate, are independent of each other. So you put these two dogs together, you do a little Punnett square over here, and what do you get? You get this dog with this dog, and you get half blues, half blue carriers. You put this with this, and it's a separate Punnett square. And you get half chocolate carriers and half chocolates. So they don't relate to each other. This does not affect this. The outcome does affect things a little bit in the, the actual color that you see, because this one is the dogs that are little d, little d, blue, and are big b, little b, have are chocolate carriers, end up just being blue dogs. We would call that a blue dog that carries chocolate. The dogs that end up being big d, little d, blue carriers, end up with two copies of this. Those would be chocolate dogs that carry blue. And then of course the last possibility would be, well not the last possibility, you could have uh, if the last possibility, you could have dogs that end up being a little d, little d, little b, little b, and that is an Isabella. So the point I want to get across here is, is that these different colors, although they're in the same dog, they don't affect each other directly. Just because you've got a blue dog doesn't mean you can't get a chocolate dog or vice versa. Okay. So that was interrelation. We were talking about interrelation. So a bit more about this interrelation thing. So majority of genes to do with color, blue, chocolate, cream, um, whether a dog is a fluffy or not, whether a dog is a merle or not, these things for the most part do not relate to each other. They don't affect each other, but there are some genes that do. An example would be the brindle gene. A dog that is not, not brindle would be KY, KY. It has to be no, no copies of brindle versus a dog that is KB, KY, or KB, KB, or actually there's KBR, which is also brindle, KBR, 
uh, KY, KBR, KBR. These are all, these are all brindle dogs. They're all brindle. And so it only takes a single copy of a KB or KBR gene to make a dog brindle. So this is a little bit different. It's, a, it's dominant in a single copy, makes it dominant and it shows up. So there are some things that relate to this, things like tan points, a dog that's ATA or ATAT, that is a tan pointed dog. If the brindle is present, the tan points don't show up or show up very little. So there is some interrelation in some of these genes, but for the most part, they're not related. Okay, now we'll talk about how you'd get a test done. So coming up, it's gonna be part two. It's gonna be about testing companies, how you do the tests, how long it takes to get the test done, why you do the test. So hopefully you'll look at part two. All right, bye.